to make sure it's not too dry or maybe too wet, but this is going to come together just fine. It shouldn't stick to your hands, but it shouldn't be, you know, so dry that you're like, well, this dough is never going to come together. start coloring immediately okay right so happy these are starting to crack okay happy lunar new year everyone um, so to everybody who celebrates so uh, China Korea Vietnam Singapore uh, Brunei Vietnam Indonesia anybody else that celebrates lunar new year happy new year um, it is the year of the wooden dragon gosh i have been dreading the year of the dragon because uh i don't make i don't make dragons like if you look online there are cute pig buns there are cute tiger buns you know there are cute like little like cow oxen buns all of those things pretty much can be made cute but nobody Nobody tries to attempt to make, you know, like dragons cute because they're supposed to be, you know, like these fierce, these fierce creatures, right? So I didn't even really know how I wanted to do it. So I started looking at like cartoons online and things that, you know, like people were selling online and how they were doing it. And um, I saw one of these where they had put like a dragon on a tail, well, like a golden like a golden nugget and I was like okay okay like I can do the golden nugget part that's fine and then I learned to kind of like roll out a dragon through clay because I think that was what the person was using I think the person was using like a play-doh or clay and so it's a little bit different when you're doing it with dough so I'll show it to you step by step but uh, long story short is um, you can get better at these long story short is of course uh, when you throw time at something and I did throw a lot of time at it uh, that one this is beautiful there is a reason that I don't eat these I will never eat this I will never eat something that I've spent so much time making um, I'm gonna go through it step by step with you this may be my like fourth or fifth year doing these types of buns every year we do like a new zodiac animal so I, I pretty much have got I've gotten an understanding of how to do this well and how to do this correctly now I am sure that not everybody is going to be making dragon buns totally fine but we're going to kind of go through step by step of uh, how to make sure that these all turn out really well okay Okay, so first up is this dough. Um, it's a nice dough because you can actually start working with it right away. Um, you don't have to wait for it to ferment or rest or whatever. You can color it, you can start shaping everything right away. Big things with this dough is to keep everything cool and to keep everything airtight. So make sure that you either have plastic wrap or you have a tight container and you're working back and forth between the refrigerator and what you have on the work surface. Um, you saw that with the dough, I, I used a machine just because when you know how the dough feels after a little bit, you should always be using a machine. It will save you so much time. It will save you contact with the dough that can get it extra warm. Um, and the reason that you don't want warm dough, and so that's why I was having it, you know, kind of a knead on a very low speed, is because once the dough is warm, now the yeast inside is just activated and so it's going to be releasing its gases it's going to create a lot of irregularities in your dough and so when you're trying to make something that's very intricate like the shapes and the animals that we do for lunar new year you want to be working with a dough that is kind of on the cool side and not 
activated all the time, okay? So you're always going back and forth between the refrigerator uh, and, and your work surface. So I wanna say that with this dough, even if you measure all of your ingredients out with a scale, sometimes different flours from different regions are, di are different. Your environment, some places are more dry, some places are you know, more wet. So your dough's consistency is going to be different. I want to let you know that with the dragons, I found it a lot more useful to have a drier dough. That means that when I felt my dough, whereas it felt okay before, after you stick it into the refrigerator and you let it hydrate some more, sometimes it gets a little bit wetter, right? I was quite liberal with my flour. Yes, the first dragon was a little bit drier, but I found that it was much easier to work with when you have kind of a more dense dough. Um, there's a difference, if you see, between um, the first one that I made and the second one that I made, which this one was a wetter dough and so it puffed more. This one was a drier dough and so it kind of puffed less. Yes, obviously a very kind of like very hydrated dough makes the, makes the bow very soft, but it's going to be a nightmare when you're decorating it, right? So you have to kind of find a good medium uh, between that. Okay, y'all have seen me kind of do this before, but I colored the yellow one with turmeric, which is great, long life, turmeric's really healthy for you. And then later on, I'm gonna just grind up some, uh, can you see that, that's uh, spinach? I'm gonna grind some of that up, I'm gonna squeeze out some of that juice. So it might make the dough a little bit wet, I might have to adjust it with some flour, but we're going to get it to the color that we want. And so, yeah, this is all from turmeric. I think this is okay for now. I think this is what I'm looking for. Might have it be a little bit darker, but... Um okay, so I've divided this up into three balls because we're making three. <laughs> and these have just rusted a bit while I was dividing up everything. So, so the thing with these shapes is the more you work with it with your hands, the warmer that this gets. And then it starts to ferment. There starts to be like little bubbles that form in it and then it kind of ruins your shape. So what you need to make sure to do is, well, first, when you're kneading, getting all of that air out, you know, when you're redistributing the yeast, getting all of that air out. And then, um, let's say you're making multiple, like we are, well, in between each one, stick it in the fridge, right? That'll help a bit, but, the fermentation process from all of the yeast, that still starts to happen. So you do need to make sure that uh, a certain amount of speed goes into this as well, okay? So there's always kind of like a slight seam with this. So just want to get rid of that seam first. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna roll it into a log. So we're gonna do it for YouTube. We are going to measure it. I'm going to say like three and an eighth of an inch. It's, it's a little bit over three inches, just a little bit, okay? And then what we're gonna do, I just wanna make sure everything's nice and smooth because this is gonna be the final presentation, okay? I'm gonna have my paper here, and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our thumbs, and we're going to pretty much divide the, the dough into third, into thirds, okay? But then at the same time, using your thumbs and kind of smushing towards the center so that you get a little bit of 
rise just from the center, okay? It does not need to be completely exact. It, it's okay if it's not. Um, so we're talking, yeah, it's pretty much like a third, a third-ish, okay? Then we're gonna fold this over. Fold that over, okay? So that this squishes together. What we're gonna do is the sides, the other two sides just need to come together, okay? And so we're gonna do a small fold there, okay? So then you can see how it becomes more of like a tail. So now then what you do, the edges, you know, just shape it, just shape it a little bit, pull those out a little bit, okay? And so what you end up getting is that. in a bit. Okay, it's been five minutes that I've turned it off. I'm totally ready to see these things fully collapse. I don't know, that is what happens with these buns. They always make me sad. Okay, slowly. <gasps> they look amazing! Oh, They did well. I mean, it's dark. It's dark, but they did well. I meant it's dark outside. These look great. I love them so much. Alright, so... Uh, there's one half done. So we'll just let them cool and then we'll do, uh, we'll just put our dragons on. Before you shape it, it's really important to get the dough into the condition. I think, is that a... Oh, it's a ladybug. You know that they call it ladybirds here in the UK, which is really weird. Um, yeah, it's like all my dead basil plants. <laughs> like, hmm. um, so very importantly, when before you start shaping the actual dragon, you want to get the ball of dough into the correct condition, situation, okay? So I assume that you've probably, you've probably left most of it into the refrigerator. You take out the ball of dough that you're going to currently be working on, okay? First thing that you do, dust it with a little bit of flour, make sure that it's kind of, uh, capable to be worked with, that it's not too wet, okay? The next thing that you do, and this is what we call when we're making bread, where you're pushing out and you're redistributing, you know, the yeast and the flour, and you're pushing out all of the bubbles that the yeast might have created so far from you working on it. Um, but a technique that I saw from um, somebody who makes like, I think uh, dim sum or, or something like that with, with Chinese pastry is that they actually use this and they roll the dough out flat. They fold the dough back. They roll the dough out flat. They fold the dough back. They roll the dough out flat. And this kind of technique, it, it is the same thing, but it just really ensures that you are pushing out all of the gases and all of the bubbles from the dough that was in there already. And this kind of like compacting layer upon layer kind of gets it back into uh, kind of like a nice like dense state where there's no bubbles in it so that's essentially what you're doing here you can either you know I guess you can really like push it out manually or you can do it with your rolling pin and so that kind of avoids contact with the hands as well so that you don't you don't warm it up too much 
Okay, so then that is when, uh, after you do that for a couple of times and you push out all of that air, that is when you make your dragon. And you wanna do it on the quicker end of things, just because the yeast is always trying to rise. Well, I did end up steaming these uh, one at a time, just because the first one, when I was shooting it with, with you all, it took a lot of time, right? We're, we're stopping for different angles and whatnot. And so that took a really long amount of time. And I just wanted to make sure that um, when you hold it for a really long amount of time, that is when the gases from the yeast start coming out. And then you're going to start getting irregularities in your dough if you start steaming it. So, so it's pretty much going to be overproved. So, um, of course, if you have a denser dough, it's going to be harder for the yeast to kind of unleash all of its bubbles as much. So that buys you a little bit of time if you have a dense dough, but still at the same time, you have to remember to work quickly. Like my second and third ones were a little bit quicker. Like I, I was able to do it, you know, without having to film. And so it was a lot better, but I still did each I still steamed each of them separately. You saw that I actually uh, steamed the, the tail, the golden nuggets separately from the dragons. And that is because I knew how much time the dragons would take and that the tails would have been way overproved. Like even if I had put them in the refrigerator, I just, I didn't trust it. And so I steamed the golden nuggets first and then I made the dragons put them on and then I re-steamed it again to cook both of them at the same time, okay? So that, that seemed to work, you know, just fine. So first up, if you just recruited your dough from the refrigerator, which you should probably be doing all the time and just keeping it cool, is that it might have had a chance to ferment, right? So the first thing that you should do is to, you know, really punch out all of that air because what will happen as time goes on is it'll form new bubbles and then the problem with these bubbles is when you steam them it becomes irregularities in the dough so that is one of the reasons that when people steam buns sometimes they become wrinkly is just that you know it takes so long to make these dragons that inside it starts to just produce these bubbles from the yeast so what you're doing here essentially is you're using the rolling pin and you're just squishing out all of those bubbles okay i would say it's going to benefit you to have a much harder dough to make the dragon i mean in terms of eating we're talking about something completely different but who eats these buns anyways So the first thing that we're doing is we are rolling a log, I want to say about like eight inches or so, but the thing with the log is you want to leave maybe the first inch thicker because that's going to be the head. bring one of the tails out you have to kind of keep in mind size okay and it really depends on you know how big this is so that you can see okay like how big should this be okay so what I'm going to do is I'm gonna cut about one inch off of this from this I am going to make three or four legs, okay? And so we'll play around with that later. Keep this in wraps though. Okay, so the first thing that we're gonna do is I'm gonna start pinching maybe, so giving the first inch as the head, I'm gonna start just pinching up. Thank you. 
For the tail, I'm just gonna flatten that off with my thumb. Everything is kind of dusted on the bottom so that it doesn't stick. You can always brush off the flower afterwards, but if it sticks, then you're in trouble, okay? So we have the tail here. Now, so take some scissors that you can make some fine cuts with, okay? And we're gonna just start cutting just the, the parts that we pinched up, okay? doesn't really matter yet. We haven't really fully shaped everything, so just keep it like that. I guess fluff up the, the scales or whatnot. The hairs, the scales, I don't know. Just a little bit. Don't break it. So you take a paper clip and we just need the U of the paper clip. And we're just going to make kind of scales. like this out like that okay. get a little idea of a head okay. so now what we need to do here you go we're going under okay so look at that so let's see bit of an incision hold on you're going at an angle. So that this comes out like that. Okay. And these become kind of the, the whiskers at the bottom. Okay, so you get how I did that? We, the flap was like this. We cut in out that flap and then it becomes this okay and then you just want to take your scissors and then cut uh, some of the whiskers there as well the nose and the mouth line 
So something like that. And so then, what you end up getting, I need to adjust this a bit. In the clips that I watched, uh, people put like a little jujube, so I cut a jujube, it's just like a date in half. to do is make kind of a long incision sorry long incision because when you make it longer then the ears come out better so then here there okay, we're gonna cut around the eye hole area so these are where the eyes are, obviously. Um, I'm thinking I should probably put in the eyes first, but oh well. And then a little bit of the nose just to give it some hairs, I think. Who knows? Huh. Once it gets its legs, it's gonna, I think, come to life. Hopefully, maybe, maybe not. Who knows? So I wasn't planning on making these eyes, but those ones didn't work because it made the dragon look sleepy or dead so we're gonna try to do that and this is just a paper clip okay okay this so this took another hour we're doing new eyes okay that one looks a little bit weird but i tried these two because those by themselves don't work so i am like wishing that yeah, these are the eyes. I mean, that took okay long. These took very long. So I'm hoping that they work out. Okay, I don't think you need these tongs, but let's see. So, oh my gosh, you can already see it's so cute, what? And you can see that I'm kind of, I'm putting it on an angle. Like these are not going like this, but you can play around with it. Cause I think when it goes on an angle, uh, I mean, obviously the eye shape is different. So I'm just gonna brush. Okay. I mean, it's so cute that it really only goes downhill from here. We all know how this works. We've all played this game before. Okay, so I'm gonna go Going at an angle. Oh geez, it's so cute. What the heck? <laughs> it looks so stupid. Which is exactly what we're going for. Um, can this ear pop up some more? It probably needs the ear. Okay, well, oh well. And then I have the other eye, which literally is that much bigger, so maybe I have to cut it a little bit. A little eye surgery at the moment. Okay. Just a little bit. And then we'll kind of make the 
edges less sharp. Oh well, but who cares? So. side of the eye needs a bit of trimming. I mean, this stuff, again, we we say it every year, it goes down to the details because um, the difference between, you know, like a derpy looking cute eye and, and the eyes of a killer, you know, very minute. So you have to really like play around with it a little bit and roundness always helps. Roundness makes things look more cute. <gasps> cute! Um, okay, so I think what I'm planning to do now is I do want the whiskers to be black. I think that that color works. And so I'm just gonna, there's just gonna be a couple inches. But I'm gonna, I'm gonna do that and then have it harden. And then I think that way it'll be easier to put it in at the end. So that's kind of what we're going to do. I have no idea. I don't know. I'm just going to let it like dry. Sorry. Hold on. It like recognizes those as eyes. So I'm just going to let it dry a bit in this form. Okay. Um, and then it'll be a little bit more steady. Okay. So now we are going to work on the legs. I actually think because of the way that we're going to curl it around the tail, it only probably needs three legs. Um, so, let me just... Doesn't hurt to have more if you have more dough, but... Um, so what I'm going to do is, obviously it needs to be proportional. Um, and it also depends on like, you're going to have to play around with how you want to stage this dragon. Um, but one thing I am sure of is the netizens of the web have spoken and Chinese dragons have five claws. So uh, I forgot, like Korean ones have a certain amount, Japanese ones have a certain amount, but Chinese ones have five. and I. I guess I'm making a Chinese one, although, you know, many people celebrate the Lunar New Year, but just so that we're clear, so we're going to go in towards the center, we're going to one cut, two cuts, three cuts, four cuts, five cuts, okay, one, two, three, four, five, all right, great a claw that is five claws. So then kind of open it up a bit. Come on. All right. So then we can add, I don't know if that's making any markings. Don't care. It's getting dark. Don't care. Okay. So there's claw. And of course, you can go ahead and decorate it some more afterwards. So, I'm going to take this off. These I made the day before and it's actually started to crack a bit just because um, it's dry. So 
I actually think from like a side profile, this really works. Like the front, I don't know. I guess it could be a bit longer. I don't know. I think it's fine. That looks fine. Okay. Okay, so after you finally have everything together and you're ready to steam it, this is the third and final tip. So usually um, I said that I let these guys rest covered uh, and improved for about 15 minutes. But the thing is, if t making the dragon has taken you a lot of time, chances are by the time you finish shaping everything, that guy's gonna it's probably it has been there for about 10 minutes so you just have to adjust your time accordingly um with animals like these that have a lot of detail i err on the side of underproving. now does that mean that maybe the bun is not as fluffy as it could possibly be sure am i going to eat these no um i usually dry them year after year um until they crack and just like die. But uh, that usually, they survive for about a year. Um, if you're going to eat them, I mean like still, right? You want whatever hard work that you put in to show off, right? So I would say, you know, let it, let it sit for maybe like 10 minutes, okay? And then straight into the steamer. So your final step is the steaming bit, right? And so you don't wanna screw up on this step because it is actually just as important. Like it, it could ruin your final product as well if you don't steam correctly. So with these buns, you want a gentle rise. You don't want it to like be like full steam and then it like rises and then it falls and then, you know, those are unstable things. You don't know if it's going to like hit certain yeast bits differently and then you're gonna get a bubble there and a bubble there, okay? So you need to start steaming on cold water, on cold water put the steamer on, put the steamer basket, whatever, whatever, uh, on cold water, medium heat to bring it up to a boil. So whatever heat you need to bring it up to a boil, but like have it be low and slow. So usually uh, from the time that it's, it's cold water to the time it boils is right around, for me, it's like right around like eight minutes. So already I kind of feel like that 10 minute rise was already in there already. So sometimes I'll just put the buns straight into the steamer, into a cold steamer. Once it comes up to a boil, you want to make sure, if you turned it on high just to get it to a boil, you want to make sure to lower it to a medium heat. Like technically everything should be on medium heat to bring it up to a boil. Steam it for about 10, 10, 12 minutes or so on medium, okay? Everything needs to be gentle. It needs to be a gentle heat. It needs to be a gentle rise. Nothing should be drastic when you're working with detailed buns, okay? So then, I think most of you have heard this before, but when you're done, after that 10 to 12 minutes is done, you want to keep the cover on it. Keep the cover on it, because if you open it, then the temperature change happens, and then sometimes the buns will deflate, right? Everything you want a gentle rise, gentle rise up to heat, gentle fall down to room temperature, Okay, so then you keep the lid on for about five minutes, five, six minutes, whatever, and then you gently lift it off, okay? The other thing that I learned this the hard way either last year or like two years ago was if you have a bamboo steamer, it's lovely. Why? Because of the bamboo lid. The bamboo lid absorbs the water, absorbs the steam coming up, and so there's no condensation where the condensation can drip back down to your buns. If that happens, like if your buns are rising and then suddenly large drops of water start falling, you're going to get those divots. You're going to get those holes, right? Through no fault of your own. You fermented it just fine. Everything was just fine. But it's just these stupid, stupid water drops, okay? So if you have one of these, that's great. Use it. If you don't, like... I hate the smell of steaming bamboo. I absolutely hate it. Um, it's like it's like this weird sweet smell that it. it I I don't love it. Uh, I think I told you in the video, but basically, uh, you have your lid. You have your lid. Stick a towel like r right under that lid. Make sure that the towel doesn't fall on the buns, obviously. So like, I don't know, tie it up in a way. But make sure that the condensation goes up to the towel, 
and it does not drip back down onto your buns. So uh, yeah, that is that is pretty much the final final word of advice um, uh, to bun success. Okay. Okay, so this one is the one where the dough was just a little bit soft, so I think... <laughs> yeah, it puffed up a little bit more. The head is like a lot more puffy. Oh. But it's a cute one. Okay, so the final thing here is that um, I wanted to wish everyone uh, my wishes for, for the Lunar New Year this year. Um, usually I always start off with good health. I wish everybody good health. Um, good health is obviously, it's, it's something that you work on every day, constantly. Whatever you want to do in life, whatever you want to help, whatever causes, whatever, whatever dreams, hopes, desires you want, uh, you need good health for that because if you don't have it, you don't have anything. So um, I wish you all good health and, and to have the desire and the courage to move towards it and, and, and to work uh, on it that way. And then the second thing I wanted to say, uh, probably like a little bit more, a little bit more complicated, uh, is just, um, there's just a lot of like, you know, unpleasantness uh, in the world in the environment and how we treat the world and how we treat people and how we just just everything and i i i wish for everyone the ability to slow things down kind of go against this this thing that i feel like is making everybody unwell um to slow things down take up a craft maybe like you like that to learn how to like fix things and mend things so you don't have to throw everything away to you know to take care of your health right because everything like you know like the advertisements the tv the everything is like making you like oh you should be eating this and that and like oh this one's so delicious and this one's so cheesy and creamy um taking taking care of your own health caring about things fixing things that are broken instead of like buying new things those are kind of all like ways to go against like this thing that's, you know, kind of, I think, I think, yeah, like making us all a little bit unwell. And um, you just become more like, I don't know, I, I end up saying too much, but I, I just think like you end up, um, when you start like caring about things like that and like caring that something's broken or like caring that you can fix something, you start caring about like your land differently, your possessions differently, your friends differently. Um, like one more thing for sure. <laughs> I, I'm never going to get to say this. One more thing is that like um, a favorite thing that I have done this year is uh, to really uh, take classes at my community center. You all have seen me do uh, the pottery and the throwing, but I've also taken, you know, sewing classes there. And um, I think a community center like America doesn't have a lot of it, but I think a community center is essentially what people who are going to church and like looking for community actually really want to go to. Only you don't have the added extra of like, you need to be like believing in something or, you know, that kind of a thing. Um, like being with other people that are, it could be like different ages, different backgrounds, different illnesses, different, like I've just met so many people and 
being in that kind of environment where it's like non-competitive and it's just like a space for you to calmly do things that you enjoy and then share that space and time with other people for like no reason whatsoever. Like they're not trying to make money off of you. These classes are reduced so that the community can, you know, can join it. Um, just without a motive of like, we're trying to make money. We're trying to, you know, grow this and grow that. Like just being in a space like that where people are like kind to you just because that is the thing that makes them happy as well is really a gift and like yeah i hope that everybody gets to find that maybe like take a class learn something new <laughs> learn to like i i like crafts because like then you you get to like fix things and mend your own things and 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 you start like appreciating like you know like like bowls that you make you start like cleaning it better you start like being much more careful with things and i think <laughs> as I say that um, and I think that that just makes you like your mindset different as like a people when you like know that each thing takes work and that you know it makes it, it helps people take care of the things around them better whether it be people or things or the earth or their animals whatever whatever so uh, stuff like that so uh, I don't know what that second wish was I have no idea what that was but like if I could just sum up all of that together and to just kind of slow down go against the grain of you know uh, ca capitalism a bit yeah okay <laughs> Happy New Year, Happy Lunar New Year. What am I trying to say? Okay, I'll see you all again next time, bye.